Hello everyone. Very warm welcome from this year's uh, Electronica in Munich. And as you can see behind me, we have a packed booth, uh, lots of tech exhibitions uh, for you, for our customers, for our partners, for uh, interested people to play with. And uh, I'm going to give you, as always, a quick run over the booth here to show you what you can uh, expect uh, when uh, playing with NXP Silicon and Solutions. So what you see here, uh, the first is basically a realization of our showroom that we also have in the cloud. And you can see here basically a table where we have a couple of sockets we can play with the different ingredients. You see here, for example, use cases like EV inverter control. You have e-scooters. Bigger just placed here one of these uh, 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 scooter sockets here uh, on uh, or some of the other tech use cases. You can put them on. You see how the um, uh, showroom is activated, illuminated, and you can virtually drive and fly into any use case uh, that you want to understand. So basically, how are inverters built? What is NXP uh, adding to an inv inverter architecture? How do we uh, bring a safe and secure, robust, industrial-grade system to life uh, for the different use cases, system use cases that we are driving? If you follow me to other system use cases, just over here, one of my very favorite ones is motor control. You see how we are enabling basically with our silicon how servo motors robot arms can be operated. And here is of course a very complicated uh, robot uh, skeleton uh, for motion position control. You see the uh, servo uh, driver control over here. And just if you if you move with me uh, in here, what you're going to see is you see our RT microcontrollers uh, in here and also the TSN switches, so Ethernet time-sensitive network. Um, of course, the buzzwords are how do we drive efficient motor control? How do we make the system trustworthy? So security, how do we have the analog sensing in and how do you do this in a trustworthy, time-sensitive, uh, real-time uh, uh, way of working? In the end, it will operate the arms and legs of your robots um, in a sense thing, connect, act, robot build up, skeleton, and that is what you're going to see here. If you just follow me over here, of course, one of the key topics is how do we get the energy for our smart sensors? And Plant E, a startup that we have uh, worked with, they have uh, come up with this very, very nice uh, solution here. Two electrodes in the soil generate energy and this energy harvesting devices that we have they are able to operate the different sensor electronics. So what you see is meta-activated sensors. What you see is six fox operated systems or also LTE M operated uh, sensor solutions. And then you can use these sensors battery free, for example, on your farm to measure water levels, moisture levels in your greenhouse and so on. Send this data via meta, via six fox, uh, six fox or LTE to the main uh, hub collect the data and basically operate your farm without disposable batteries. Fantastic setups, of course, especially out there in the, in the rural areas uh, uh, if you want to farm in a sustainable way. And just join me to, to the other levels of, of uh, um, renewable uh, energy management and the smartest way how we can operate a smart grid. So what you're going to see is, of course, you're, you're going to see management electronics how do we manage to get electrons out of the solar cells into the grid? How do we, with our either the mix microcontrollers, are able to manage a smart grid, to be smart on the grid? So what you see is you have different energy producers, be it solar energy, wind energy, and you have different consumers of energy. And our um, blockchain-based uh, either the mix operated um, solutions, they are um, managing to switch between the producers and the consumers, depending on from where the cheapest energy is coming, where is oversupply of energy, where is uh, uh, over demand of energy. And you, for the first time here, see now a uh, setting of a super, super smart grid, blockchain secured. And this is how our energy distribution in future in our decentralized energy generations will happen. All NXP silicon based. Now, if you move with me over here to our more heavy duty stuff, of course. This is also how do you use your energy for driving. You see it over here. Basically, we have our green boxes, uh, our uh, drivetrain uh, management. How do we work with these drivetrain boxes to operate combustion engine 
self-driven cars, but especially, of course, battery-driven uh, uh, cars. How do we connect to the cloud? This is basically our smart connected gateways, our gold box. And then what we have developed a reference design as a complete yeah, one ECU domain, the connectivity domain to the outside world of the car. So we have one box that handles all the electromagnetic waves that are sent to and from the vehicle, dispatches it in the car and, and operates uh, then there all the domains uh, or zones of the vehicle. And this is basically our orange box over there. Everything in from uh, Wi-Fi to Bluetooth to uh, ultra wideband uh, to radio reception. So all that you can think of, all electromagnetic waves. The domain controller is an i.mx microcontroller from our side. And you have a very, very nice Ethernet connection, simple Ethernet connection then down to the gateway uh, that is residing here in the, in the gold box. Of course, also the same Ida the Mix Silicon is operating our, uh, our in-car uh, uh, displays, the real estate. You can see basically the, the instrument cluster just over here. You can see the, the co-driver uh, displays. Uh, you see them basically in, in hardware virtualization, the different um, uh, areas separated from each other so that malware cannot move from the one to the other area, that you have different levels of functional safety. The, the instrument cluster has a higher safety class than, for example, your infotainment display. So all of that architected here in this way. And that is, of course, the stuff uh, that we use to make your car more convenient, more sustainable. And now it comes also more safe because what you see here is we are using also our little ultra wideband chips that we have in the dashboard, not only for car access, but we use them also as radar beacons. And this is 10 gigahertz uh, uh, type of radar solutions. And you can use these chips to measure the breathing of a child. In other words, you can have occupancy detection. You measure whether living objects, adults, childs, animals are in the vehicle. And if you have a child in the child seat, you can of course have the child seat and child present detection, switch off your airbags or warn the parents, uh, don't leave your car uh, in a, in a, in a uh, hot environment and leave your, your kids or, or animals in. So the occupancy detection is of course, even enforced by law, a critical topic, safety topic for cars of the future. So this is all what we can show here uh, easily with our silicon on our car demonstrator. And if you just follow me to the very end here, how we gonna operate also, also under the hood, then, then what, you, what you're gonna see here is basically now, if we take our electrons, we take them out of the battery, how do you get the wheels spinning? Very simply, we have here a, a demo where we have uh, one of the inverter control systems. So one tiny body controller that we are using an S32K uh, device, and that is operating dual motors here of course, perfectly uh, uh, ready-made for the electric vehicles of the future. So you don't need loads of silicon, you don't need ultra complex systems, but really very, very tailor-made body controllers, uh, uh, powertrain controllers that we use here. And they even have enough headroom to use AI-based systems as well. So AI algorithms, of course, no monster AI algorithms, but at least on the level to optimally adapt and steer to the driving uh, uh, scenarios that you as a, as a driver or that your environment poses on you. And now the last question, the topic that was missing in between is of course, how do you get the electrons into the battery and how do you manage that? And if you just peer over my shoulder over here. Give me one second. What, what, what you're gonna see here is basically uh, our uh, battery management, uh, electronics, our activities in how do we do our battery cell management? So health uh, of the battery, state of charge of the batteries, all that monitoring. And then, of course, you have your electrons in the battery, but how do you determine in future that you're in an intelligent way, are charging and are not wearing out your batteries? So that you are also over 10 years, are in a careful way uh, charging, how do we apply the AI and machine learning? And our partner Electra used our silicon here, used our connected gateway to the cloud. And what we are doing is the following. We start learning how you charge, how a million cars are charging. This is why it is in the cloud. The cloud uh, algorithms get back loaded into the vehicle and say, A last under these conditions, weather, climate, driving conditions, uh, driver behavior. 
you should have an intelligent charging and don't do a brute force charging cycle each time. And what you can see here on these curves even, over 10 years of battery lifetime, you have a difference very easily of more than 10% charging levels still up in your battery if you follow these intelligent learning charging cycles. So in other words, what we are doing is not only sustainability in electric driving, but also sustainability in saving the capabilities of your battery. You don't have to renew your, your infrastructure that often. Yeah? And of course, what you need for that is all the electronics, pumping electrons in and out of the battery, all the intelligence and functional safety, how you treat your battery cells, but also how you interact with the outside world in a safe and secure way that your algorithms are optimized in the handling in and out of the vehicle, so over the air um, uh, uh, data transmissions. So I hope with all of that, I could show you a little bit how we are building our smart connected devices, what we are doing from the showrooms, 50 use cases in there, into building robots, building industrial robots, getting the energy for our robots, so uh, smart grid management. And of course, when we have collected all these electrons, how we get them in motion again in the vehicles and in a convenient way. Looking forward to seeing you in our showrooms uh, and I hope I uh, have inspired you to reaching out to us uh, for more detailed discussions on your innovations as well. Thanks a lot and talk to you soon.